1939 to 1945, a lot can happen in that time and a lot did. So today we're doing top 10 messed up survival stories of World War II. Number 10, Japanese holdouts. September 2nd, 1945, World War II had come to an end as the Japanese forces officially surrendered. Well, that's awesome, right? Time to go on vacation, honey. Say, those Pacific Islands look beautiful this time of year. Well, especially when we're not being shot at. They look a lot better then. Sounds great, right? I know. Well, I'd be careful where you go. As when night falls on the islands, you can never be too sure what lurks in the brush. That includes soldiers of the Japanese Empire still fighting World War II on their own terms. That's right, Japan went on the defensive after the Battle of Midway during World War II, occupying every island in the Pacific to slow down the Allies. Now, you mix in being dug into those islands for years with an unrelenting dedication to the Emperor, thank you very much, and you get yourself some soldiers who just won't quit. Years after World War II ended, a handful of dudes who had finally come to realize that it was all over finally surrendered. However, some soldiers stayed in hiding for up to almost 30 years. They thought they were fighting World War II for 30 years. That is insane. Number nine, Mad Jack Churchill. With the way Hollywood works, I'm more surprised this guy hasn't gotten a movie made about him. Seriously, look this guy up. You won't believe it. However, what I can say is I'm glad he was on our side. And I am very sure of that. Mad Jack Churchill was a British commando who was more known for his use of medieval tactics well, because he liked to use a longbow and a broadsword uh, for battle, which I, I can't even tell you how messed up that is. I can only imagine the fear in the Germans' eyes when a man cometh marching over a hill, playing Scotland the Brave, wielding a broadsword and charging at full speed. <sighs> Jack was captured, escaped, captured again, and after he and some other POWs dug their way to a prison, he then walked hundreds of miles to the Allies in Italy. That is a, that's just a crazy story. Where is that man's story? And coming over to the, you know, playing Scott on the Brave, that's crazy, man. That's insane. I, I like that, though, I like that song. That's a good song choice if I've ever heard that. Number eight, Desmond Doss. Besides having a name that really sounds cool, Desmond is a man with a unique experience. When you think of war, it's guy with gun go boom, right? Makes sense, sure. Well, not according to Desmond. He walked into battle as a combat medic without a firearm. Yes, nothing to defend himself with. I know, he's crazy, right? I know. Crazy enough to earn himself the Medal of Honor, which usually isn't earned whilst you're still alive. Usually earned after you you don't make it. His valor was proven in Okinawa and Hacksaw Ridge, good movie, go see it, where he helped carry injured men back from the line and literally saved their lives, all while under the threat of enemy attack and sharpshooters. Over his life-saving career, he would save up to 100 lives and a few more. He even saved some enemy lives, a shining light in pure darkness. Number seven, second son. Sutomo Yamaguchi is a very lucky man. Folks, after hearing about this one, I would go and buy a lottery ticket. Seriously, you may win after this. Pretty lucky. Okay, so Mr. Yamaguchi was on a business trip in Hiroshima on August 6th, 1945. He was set to return to his home in Nagasaki when an American B-52 bomber dropped its payload on the city. And this was the big bad one. Miraculously, Mr. Yamaguchi, after being blown off his feet and receiving cuts and radiation burns, was still alive. He rested at a shelter and then returned home. On August 9th, he was explaining what had happened to him three days prior when another large flash of light and explosion went off. This was the other big one. It left him deaf in one ear, but he was further away from ground zero the second time. But yes, this is a man who survived both atomic devices. He lived all the way up until his 90s. Very impressive. Number six, escaping to South America. This is one of the reasons I have an issue with the Disney Star Wars movies. Hang in there, trust me. After Darth Vader destroys the Sith with the love of his son and the Emperor takes a dive into the exploding Death Star 2 reactor, oh no, not another dive in the reactor. Most people think it's all over, but what about the countless other Imperials, thousands of stormtroopers and star destroyers? For the Disney movie, they pretty much just updated the look and said, yeah, they're back, they're, they're back now. But I need more details, baby. Speaking of details, how did high-ranking Germans escape to South America after World War II ended? Hmm, yes, thought-provoking, isn't it? Well, that's right, they did. The answer, though, is a network of rat lines. Germany 1945 had an issue. If you look to your left, there was a coalition force of armies coming their way, singing Yankee Doodle Dandy all the way to Berlin. On their right, 
was an army bent on revenge singing a much more heinous version of Yankee Doodle Dandy all the way to Berlin. So the Germans grabbed their schnitzel and sauerkraut to go and de-assed the area. Trouble is, the guys who were escaping were the worst of the worst. We weren't talking about any grandpas or opas here. These, these guys are pretty bad. Ones responsible for very horrible things. Some were caught, but sadly, others were not. Josef Mengele comes to mind. Google him. Not nice. Number five, the Bataan March. The Bataan March is very similar to the beep test. Or imagine track and field in school, except instead of teachers forcing you to compete in events not designed around your body type, thanks, you're a soldier and the Imperial Japanese Army is making you march miles in the brutal sun. And some people with no shoes on, who often get berated and tormented. Okay, I guess the two aren't very similar at all, but you get the point. All you need to know is that some POWs took a very long walk, and a lot of these POWs, for sure, were not supposed to be treated that way. It was, it was really bad, actually. Did not make it to the destination at all. MacArthur said he was coming back after this, and boy did he. Ooh, he came back with a vengeance. Number four, veterans. This one is a broad stroke, but I think it fits the bill here. Pretty accurately, actually. This goes out to all veterans of the Second World War. Folks at home, you might have to show them this because I can imagine they're a little bit older and probably not too familiar with YouTube, but thank you to all the men and women out there who did their part and paid a bill that I know I never could. The closest I ever want to be to a battlefield is, well, Battlefield or Call of Duty. From the campaigns in Africa, Italy, France, and pushing all the way into Germany as well as the brave fighting in the Pacific. I remember, and I for one am very thankful. You don't need to tell me how hard it was to survive or the fight when you came back home. A little a wholesome point there, I, I love that. You guys are great, thank you very much. Number three, Bob Hoover, the pilot's pilot. You gotta respect the style of Bob Hoover. Okay, so let's say you spend a year in a German POW camp. You make for your escape, except now what? If it's early 1940s like Bob Hoover found himself in, not a lot of Germanless areas uh, to be in. Well, Bob Hoover knew he needed to say Auf Wiedersehen and get the heck out of there. Bob Hoover did not walk, however. No, he did something much cooler. Kind of like when you hijack your first Banshee in Halo 3. Yeah, same thing and same feeling. Bob, being the excellent pilot he was, managed to steal a German plane and flew back to safety, where he linked up with some British allies in the area. How James Bond of you, sir. Oh, yes, I love it. Number two, Ivan Chizov. Another airplane story, but gosh darn, this one is uh, really impressive. Ivan Chizov was a Russian fighter pilot who was having some plane troubles. And by plane troubles, I mean it was going to crash. So yeah, not good. The man knew he had to eject, but the troublesome German planes around him, and the German planes being known for shooting at parachuters, well, he knew he had to make a five head play. He said, I'll just wait till I'm below the ensuing air battle, and then I'll pull my parachute. Well, sadly, he waited too long, and his chute didn't open. He fell 5,000 meters to the ground, and lived. He lived. I, I, Poor Ivan did sustain some serious injuries, but like a miracle, got the medical attention he needed and asked to join back in the fight only three months later. That's just kind of crazy. 5,000 meters and he lived? How? Number one, German summer camp. I promise it's not going where you think it's going. The international community had an idea of what Germany was up to during the years before World War II, but no one really knew for sure. When allies moved into occupied Europe, it was clear some people were gonna have some explaining to do, okay? You can't do this, guy. You can't do that, man. You can't do that. But you guys knew that. It was awful and it should never happen again. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. However, today the worst camp I want to talk about is their youth program. Mustache Man was trying to build a better Germany. If he started with the youngins, the camp was designed like many today to give young folks something to do, to educate them, keep them occupied, or in my mom's case, uh, some peace and quiet during the summer. Well, this camp, it wasn't bonfires and swimming. It was all kinds of nasty things you two probably won't let me say. But what I can tell you is that it was a brainwashing effort to get everyone in support of their not so glorious leader. Okay, now time for some comments. Katie said, I think all my teachers were all nice from junior high school to high school. Well, Katie, that's just really nice. I like that for you. I'm glad. I had some really nice teachers too. I, I gave a shout out to one a couple of videos ago. I had some nice ones, but I, I had a fair share of bad ones too. I don't know why. I swear, I swear I was nice. I was cute, I was nice. I swear. Okay, Whip Viper said, great video, Ched. As for not having Facebook when I was a kid, well, pics or it didn't happen. Hmm, I was a complete angel. All the pictures prove that. Yup, complete angel, yup. 
Hmm, yeah, so something tells me you're not telling the truth on that one. Something tells me you might have been up to no good. I don't know about that. I don't know. Picture didn't happen. That's a, oh, I don't know. I will we'll have to see about that. I don't know. Andrew says, another good one, Chetty. Looking forward to the birthday stream. Yes, that's right. I'm streaming this weekend. It's my birthday stream. That's that's so nice you remembered. It's so cute. Thanks, guys. Thanks for checking out Bumblebee and my, my socials at home, too. That's really nice. That's really sweet, thank you. I'm looking forward to it too. That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too wanna to survive against all odds, then check out my socials down below. I've been your host, Big Chet, and stay sweet, my little honeybees. No, not another dive in the reactor. <laughs> yes, do it. Uh